Space Force Season 1, Netflix original starring Steve Corral. He teamed back up with Greg Daniels. Yes, they were together on The Office. So, the big question is, is it woke? Is it not woke? We know what Netflix's modus operandi is. Is this show particularly woke? We're about to find out. Monkeys, roll the footage. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. This is episode number four of Is It Woke? Today's focus will be Space Force. First, I want to apologize for this video kind of coming out late as it's normally delivered to you on Saturdays, but the weather was beautiful this weekend. I decided to take a weekend off. Now, in under, let's say, seven minutes, we'll find out is Space Force woke or is it not woke? It's a Netflix show, so as they say, this could go either way. Space Force is a Netflix original series brought to us by Steve Carell and Greg Daniels, who they teamed up formerly on The Office. Now, this show is based, of course, on the United States Space Force, which our current president brought into existence as a sixth branch of the military. And what's funny is this show kind of lampoons both sides of the aisle equally. And I think that's much to the chagrin of most critics. Episode 1, titled The Launch, we really don't get much woke. We have a little back and forth between General Naird and General Kit Graviston, who is the head of the Air Force, as we know. And he makes fun of Corral saying he wears a dress. Corral, you know, counters with uh, gender roles. That's quite offensive. And it just kind of goes from there. These two obviously have a disconnect between them. Uh, Naird's trying to understand Twitter and the cultural zeitgeist. And then we get an AOC surrogate congresswoman from New York. Episode 2 is titled Save Epsilon 6, which is the satellite that Space Force launches. The Chinese, of course, cut the solar panels off of the satellite, and it is the job of Space Force to repair it. We get some animal rights stuff in this episode because they have a dog and a chimp in space, but they have no plans to bring them back in because of the cost it would incur to have a shuttle that could bring them back in through reentry and not burn up. So that's about it in this episode. Really a funny episode, but nothing to speak of woke. Episode 3, Mark and Mallory go to Washington. The biggest woke line we get is from Jane Lynch, where she tells Carell's character, Naird, if he acknowledges her gender again, she will proceed to fuck him in the ass. We get a little bit from General Kit Graviston from the Air Force as he touches on climate change and animal rights with Dr. Mallory in passing, but really nothing major. Jamaica off the Florida Key. We got a few barbs at the red state Alabama, which I have no problem with, but it was from his daughter because she gets hit on a soldier who's from there. Makes a few jokes about him being simple, red state, nothing real bad. There's a place called Kokomo. We get a little bit of that good old toxic masculinity with Naird, Kick, and Mallory discussing the surrogate AOC's lack of panty lines showing through her skirt. That's where you wanna go to get away from it all. Episode 4, Lunar Habitat, we get Naird making a comment when preparing to train for space that he's known in America as what used to be called a man. Bodies in the sand. Also, we see Naird's wife in prison. She has cornrows, which is funny because it's Lisa Kudrow, and says that her cellmate did it, and it's not cultural appropriation if someone else who's black does it. Tropical drinks melting in your hand. Episode 5, Space Flag. Kit Graviston, in the Air Force General makes a joke about how progressive Naird is by having Dr. Mallory as his number two, which, of course, Dr. Mallory, John Malkovich's character, is gay. No big deal. We'll be falling in love to the rhythm of a steel drum band. We get a little back and forth about BB guns and their usage in the training exercises versus the Air Force with Mallory and Naird. As Naird says, they used to shoot the poor kids in the neighborhoods with BB guns, but that's not PC these days. Down and go. Episode 6, The Spy, we get a funny little bit about BWAM, which is black women and Asian men couplings during an interrogation of Chan, and the sci he is a scientist, regarding the high success rate of those couplings in marriages. 
Steve Carell's character has the thing for accidentally outing people because he did it to Oscar in the office. He does it to Dr. Mallory and another one of the research scientists from NASA in this episode during the investigation. Trying to find out who the spy was. Again, Aaron Naird gives Duncan Tabner, the soldier from Alabama, a little bit more grief about fake news and being from a red state. But the needling is so evenly balanced in this, it really doesn't become a problem. Episode 7, titled Edison James. Edison is a female tech guru. She's a feminist. She has a rocket fuel she wants to sell the Space Force, although it turns out it doesn't work. Steve Carell lets her save face once he finds out, does not embarrass her at all, which, again, no problem here. There's a scene where Aaron's sitting in Edison's Maybach and... Duncan scares her. She spills ice cream all over the inside of the car and then decides to pin it on an imaginary white guy. Episode 8, we get a little bit of mansplaining and Captain Ali admonishes Dr. Chan for that when they're talking about anime on their road trip. There's also a scene where Lisa Kudrow's discussing with Steve Carell's character about having an open relationship because she's incarcerated for 40 years. They're still married. She wants to have somebody close to her. She tells him, it's okay, you can too. Episode 9, good to be back on the moon. The only moment that could be misconstrued is when Captain Ali first steps out on the moon, and instead of saying it's good to be back on the moon, she says it's good to be black on the moon, and then proceeds to say... Oh, shit. Episode 10, titled Proportionate Response. The only real line we get in this is Dr. Mallory telling Naird that he doesn't need to be subversive because he's a straight white male. And that's about it. Is it woke or is it not woke? This show made fun of both sides evenly. They skewered the left. They skewered the right. They made fun of individual congresswomen, congressmen, generals, branches of the military, the president. With the way this show handled every issue that it faced as far as things that could have been woke in other shows with other writers, you can tell that they kind of held back from the heavy-handed and ham-fisted political leanings each way in this show. While there was some things that maybe people would consider a dog whistle for being woke, I didn't see it because, well, I just don't have that thin of skin when it comes to that stuff. So, all these factors coming into consideration, being carefully reviewed, I am ready to make my decision. Is Space Force woke or is it not woke? My verdict is not woke. The critics got mad because it didn't go after the current administration more. The audience liked it for the reason the critics disliked it. But... It does need a season two because we've got a lot of cliffhangers with what's happening with the Chinese in space. What are we going to do with Lisa Kudrow, her character escaped from prison, Steve Carell took a helicopter. This show was great, not woke. Let's take it home. Here's where you can find us all across social media, at TV2BR on Instagram, the Place to Be Reviews page on Facebook, the official Place to Be Reviews fan page, that's our private group, at the Place to Be RE1 at N80 Pete on Twitter, past podcast available on Anchor, iTunes, and Spotify, and now the place to be reviews on Discord. You can also email us if you're old-fashioned, okay, boomer, at the place to be reviews at mail.com, the world's best mail. Thank you very much. Also, on the way out, don't forget to bitch slap that like button. Do me that big solid, would you? Yeah, I think you can do that. Also, hail the fandom menace. Hail to thee, my subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. Help us grow the channel. Hail the Fandom Collective, a group which we are proud members of now. We'll be working with them on a lot of collaborations in the near future. And I'd like to personally thank you all for joining the Place to Be Reviews. 
That's right, I'm Etepakuian of the Place to Be Reviews right here with all yous. Remember, if I don't see you, have a great day and a pleasant tomorrow.